cosplay photography can be tricky. Figuring out ways to keep each and every picture new and interesting while also making it generally look good is an ever-evolving challenge. Therefore, I'm constantly thinking of ways to add that extra spark, that extra new thing into each and every picture that I take. Like, I'm always asking, what's gonna make this picture pop on a person's feed? Like, what's gonna make them go, I wanna see more of that cosplay? This idea led me to take on one of the most ambitious and subsequently one of the most absurdly difficult photography projects of my entire life. So allow me to take a little bit and tell you about how I managed to accomplish one of the best photographs I've ever taken from one of the worst situations I've ever been in. Maybe you'll learn something along the way. Let's go. Picture me. It's going on midnight, the literal night before I leave on a three-week trip to Japan. I'm tired beyond work. I'm only halfway packed and the whole time I'm thinking I have to have something to post while I'm over there I can't just leave my Instagram like sitting there for close to a month like even beyond an engagement standpoint me personally I'm not cool with that I don't I don't want that to happen so I'm racking my brain digging deep within my beyond withered brain cells to try and pull an idea out of somewhere and that's when I spot a package of sparklers left over from the fourth of of July. It was just like being bam, bam, bam it, 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 I mean, it was it. It told itself. Having a picture of like a single sparkler like reflecting off a TV head with like that one cool light source and all the things coming down, it was perfect. I had all the things right there. We were good to go. And plus, on top of this, I recently got a super open aperture lens which could capture some really awesome night photography. So, without a sense of any sensible inhibitions, I grabbed the TV head, put the sparklers on top, and problem number one arose. There was not a single lighter in the house with which to light the sparklers. Nobody in my household smokes. There were just, there were none available. So after searching literally everywhere in my household that I could think of, the next best thing that we had was a box of matches that were both wet and appeared to be from like the early 90s. These things were so old that like the strike surface would, it was just peeling off, but it was the only thing I had to work with. And man, mind you, leaving on like a 13 hour flight, three week trip tomorrow, didn't really have much room to work with. So I pushed forward with the project and it almost immediately Immediately, problem number two arose. See, generally, cameras need something to focus on? Weird concept, I know. And when it's pitch dark outside, they usually have a pretty difficult job doing that. <laughs> so I had my camera, my poor little almost 10 year old EOS Rebel T2i, and I was trying to guess the focal length based on the street lights in the street behind my house. And then on top of that, I didn't really know what exposure to use because I was guessing upon my TV head. I just didn't know, I didn't know where to begin in that department, but I was still rocking on complete and total hubris. So I pushed forward and attempted to start taking photos. And this is where problems one and two compounded into problem number three. My camera does not have a remote function because it is so old, it literally does not support Wi-Fi. Great camera, but it's literally almost a decade old at this point, and I certainly don't have the hardwired remote for it. So here's how I had to do this, and let me let me see if I can lay this out effectively. I had to attempt to light the sparkler, which the match only lit about 20% of the time, and the sparkler only ignited probably 5-6% of the time. And once it was lit, I had to go and I had to press the button on the camera, start the self-timer, run around to the front of the camera, try and remember and hope that I was correctly in frame and also do a proper pose all within about 10 seconds of the self timer running. <laughs> It's like, it's like upsetting to talk about. <laughs> and I did this. I actually went through with this time after time. I was tearing the sides off the matchbox, trying to get them lit. I was running out of sparklers. And finally, eventually, I got, <laughs> I got an image that was in focus. It was exposed properly. But when it was being captured, I horribly misrepresented the 
noise that would come from boosting the exposure up so high. So for those of you who don't know, when you turn the ISO number up on a camera, it gets really noisy. And because it was so dark, I was having to shoot at an ISO of 6400, which is often considered the upper range of what's comfortable. But it was a little bit beyond comfortable for my poor T2i, because this is the image I was left with. I'm just gonna walk off frame. Let's see, just, just take a, just, just take a good look at it. Just, <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so bad. The color noise came out like almost exclusively green. I've never seen that before. So like I'd essentially done about an hour an hour and a half of just desperate, uncomfortable, horrible photography work for an image that was almost unusable. <laughs> but like in all seriousness, coming out of a photo shoot with just literally nothing is one of the most upsetting things to ever happen. And so I was standing there thinking, like looking at this, I have to be on a plane, I, I have to work on this. There's something that I have to be able to do to save this image. And you know what? I was right. What was stopping me from digging deep within the mass of photo editing knowledge that I have deep within me and pulling out every technique to make this work, to make this objectively awful photo into something that's worthy and presentable, of something I can be proud of. And that is exactly what I did. That is exactly how I managed to turn that garbage image, this absolute monstrosity, into this, into something good, into, look at this, look at how, look at how cool this is, dude, it, it turned out so well. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Hopefully show you some tips and tricks on how to save maybe a similar image that was just too noisy or something similar, maybe just give you general photo editing advice. And it all starts with, Adobe Lightroom Classic. We're gonna start by opening up our awful cosplay picture in Lightroom. Ideally, you capture this image in RAW, but if you didn't, it should be all right. And everything we're gonna do will be under the Development tab and furthermore, under the Details panel. From here, we're just adjusting each of these sliders to get our desired results. Photo editing is really just adjusting sliders. I, that's... The most important section in the menu is the Noise Reduction section. By sliding the luminance up, the noise almost immediately melts away. Now, this process makes the photo look a little bit like a painting, which we don't particularly want. However, Lightroom saves the day again. If we adjust the detail and contrast panels, as well as the sharpening panels, we can bring a lot of the finer detail back into the image. Here's a super spicy tip. If you hold the Alt key on your keyboard while you adjust the slider, you can actually view just the details while you're adjusting them. Keep adjusting these sliders to fit your desired results. And people call photo editing hard. <laughs> I'm gonna upset a lot of people by saying that actually. Each one changes a different aspect of the image and it all comes down to how you want your final image to look. It doesn't take much until we have a virtually noiseless image. Now it's all a matter of opening this puppy up in Photoshop and doing some tidying up. First and foremost, I use the spot correct tool to get rid of the street light I accidentally captured in the background because somehow the camera captured the single solitary streetlight out of the many streetlights on the street behind me. I don't get it, but whatever. Next, I slapped some color correction on there to make the final image look overall cooler. And somewhere during this process, I realized that the sparkler looked more like a burning ball than, well, a sparkler. And I needed to reintroduce some of the sparkler details back into the image to make it more visually appealing. So I just, downloaded a PNG of some sparks, softened it a little, added some motion blur, and it worked, actually, mostly. It worked really well for slapping a feather PNG on there, to be quite honest with you. After a little bit more general color correction and contrast adjustments, we have a photo actually worthy of posting. With a fairly simple process, I managed to bring over an hour's worth of work back from the dead. Let's get another side by side, all lean out of the way here. Look at how much detail we managed to bring back. It's actually crazy, and like this is just in Lightroom, dude. Now, hopefully, through this process, you learned a little something on how you can save a photograph, cosplay or not, from the depths of noise hell. Just because an image didn't turn out the right way on your camera doesn't mean you can't use the raw power of editing to turn it into really anything you want. You know, funny enough, this image actually. 
actually didn't really do very well on Instagram. It's one of my lowest performing posts ever, which in all honesty is fine. I mean, I learned a lot while making it and I had the chance to teach you guys something too. But if you feel so inclined, if you could go to my Instagram linked around the screen and below and give it some love, maybe it would really mean a lot to me. And while you're scrolling down below, let me be real for a quick second if I can. Almost 91% of the views on all of my videos come from people who are not subscribed. That's a lot of you. Subscriptions really, really help me more than I can possibly state. It lets me know truly if people want to keep coming back and seeing the stuff that I'm making. So if you could do me a big, huge, massive favor, hit that button down below. It takes less than a second. It's free and it means you get to see more awesome cosplay content, a lot of which is coming super duper soon. It truly does mean the world that you guys continue to want to see this and enjoy what I'm making and I can't wait to keep making awesome, wonderful things for the foreseeable future. But above all else, guys, be safe, make good choices, have a wonderful day, and peace out.